Um, do I have a volunteer from the audience to help me out? Someone who's okay. Come on up. I need some help. So I was at I, I was supposed to give a talk for girls in tech like a month ago, and th there was no way they could find a projector or get one set up. And I got all freaked out. And I'm like, oh, I can't have this happen again. So I have a uh, I have slides. So I'm really I'm really happy. I'm actually really impressed that everything got set up in time. Can I can I use your internet? Oh, sure. oh thank you so much. Okay. Leave Sarah May's information up. Good talk. So actually, my, my little presentation is going to be a little more selfish. So we were asked to talk about sort of what we are and or who we are and what we do and how we got to start programming. So there's me. And uh, I'm a Python programmer, mostly, these days. Did I hear a cheer? It's exciting. <laughs> so Python actually isn't named after the snake. It's named after Monty Python. Anybody here a Monty Python fan? Yay! Okay, so anyways, but they'll accept the snake now, too, as, as, as a mascot, so it's exciting. Okay, next slide. They stick together on that side, but otherwise they're okay. All right, so about me, um, I'm from Minnesota originally. Is anybody here from the Midwest, not from here? Woo, yeah, okay, exciting. Um, and I went to the University of Minnesota and studied computer science. And I started programming at 19. So like Sarah, I was in programming when I was a baby. Um, that isn't my baby, sorry. I think to my baby will probably end up like that with a little C book. But uh, no, that's a, yeah, so I started programming when I was 19, which I started in college, like, like Sarah did. And I, I got involved very much in a similar way in that I was intending to be a graphic design student. And for my major, we had to take a programming class, a web programming class, and we had to learn Macromedia Director. I don't even think Macromedia Director exists anymore. <laughs> but you made Shockwave files, and we had to make little games in Shockwave as part of our major. And when I got really into it, I made a very crazy game. It had like 10 levels. It was a, it was a version of Arkanoid or Brick Breaker. And it was just insane. And what ended up happening is that people in my class, for this, this class I was taking in programming, started playing it and like complaining that they couldn't get past level eight or like sending me email about some little thing in the, in the game. And I was like, wow, this is, this is really great. I love doing this. I love, I love writing software for other people. And there, I, I got this sort of, it was this rewarding feeling that I hadn't really felt with art. Never mind that I kind of suck at art, which you can tell from <laughs> my slides. <laughs> I, I decided I was probably better at programming than art, and so I started taking some programming classes, and I, I never actually really wanted to be a programmer, and it, it all sort of just fell into place, and I switched majors and, and had a great time. So, okay, next slide. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you so much. This is great. So I moved out to California <laughs> after college because I hate, I mean, Minnesota's a great place, but if you've ever been there, the weather is horrible. <laughs> and I moved to California, and I thought this was like heaven or something because <laughs> it's always nice. And, uh, and I got sort of involved in the web culture here, and I, I worked for a couple of startups and worked for some companies, and then I started my own startup. And it was kind of funny because I was young, right out of college, and I said, well, you know what? I have absolutely no responsibilities. I have absolutely no bills, and I'm going to start a company. <laughs> so I started working on a, an application, and then I got some other people involved, a couple of my friends, um, Kevin Rose, who runs Dig.com, um, and Daniel Burka, who is the head designer for Dig.com. And we co-founded a company called Pounce. And it was really exciting and, and really fun, and I had a great time. And then it was bought by Six Apart last year, which is a blogging company. And they actually shut, shut the site down, which wasn't, wasn't the most fun. But uh, now I work at Six Apart on secret things that haven't launched yet. So I can't really talk about my job, but it's fun. I work on Python apps at Six Apart. So Six Apart is known for being kind of a Perl shop. They do a lot of, of Perl applications, and, and they are. They're a really nice company. And all the people are very, very nice, and it's great. And so they're starting to do some stuff with Python and Django. And Pounce is actually a Django app, which is a web framework for Python, very much like Rails is a web framework for Ruby. When I started Pounce, I was actually a Java programmer, because I learned Java in college. That's kind of the, the thing you get taught now, nowadays. And <laughs> yeah, I think, I think Sun buys a lot of computers for computer labs. 
So we all learned Java. <laughs> and I actually started off doing Java apps for startups. And then when I had the chance to make my own web application, I was like, well, you know, I'm a little tired of the public static void main. I think I'm going to try something a little more concise, something a little more, you know, something new, something fun. So I actually looked at Rails. And that was actually what I really wanted to build it in, but I couldn't get it installed. <laughs> which is why there's this event tomorrow, which you should go to, and they'll help you install your <laughs> install Rails. <laughs> but it was actually impossible to get installed. And at the time, there was no documentation on it. It was, it was about three years ago, and it was pretty much impossible. And Django is actually written by, the, the, li the framework itself is written by a journalist. So getting it installed is basically like reading the docs. It is the easiest thing to do ever. And the documentation is very well spelled out. Like everything is just, I don't know, it's almost as if like, you know, you were that baby. You could probably write a Django app. <laughs> but it's just all because of the documentation. So I built a Django app because I had an app up and running in 20 minutes, whereas I couldn't get install Rails installed in two hours. So it's kind of sad. But I've done, I've done a little Ruby programming since then, so I don't, I don't feel that bad. OK, next slide. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. Oh, no. These are actually like giant post-it notes, so they kind of stick together. Anyways, um, I'm on GitHub. If you, you want to check out some more of my code, um, this is my promotional, like, hey, follow me on GitHub. I actually have a little bit of a bet going to see if I can get a certain number of followers by a certain time on GitHub. So if you can help me out, <laughs> that, <laughs> that would be great. I think I win $100 if I can get a certain number of followers. So anyways. There's a bunch of code on there. So I actually have a Ruby file on there. So if you want to check that out, it's actually a, there's a couple of web frameworks for Ruby, and one of them is called Sinatra. And so I recently wrote the shortest tiny URL shortener in existence. I think it's like less than 50 lines of code, and it's written in, in Sinatra, which is a very concise web framework. So there's a bunch of web frameworks out there, and it, it, there's a good variety. It, Sinatra is a very small one. So next slide. Yay. Exciting. Thank you so much. This is, this is, I mean, you guys are putting in some good work here. I'll have to get you a drink afterwards. <laughs> I also work on, some of the, uh, the open source projects I work on is OAuth. And I maintain the Python OAuth library. And OAuth is, for web apps, um, it's for APIs and for developers to have access <laughs> to, to data and APIs that are normally private, right? So say your Twitter direct messages or your private Flickr photos. It's nice to be able to allow applications outside of Flickr, like say you have a desktop application or something, to be able to access your photos. So you have an awesome uploader that uploads photos super fast to Flickr. But you want to have some of those be private, and you're posting them to your own account. So you need to, Flickr needs to know that that's you. So OAuth is a way to say, this is me, and this is what I'm doing. And I've had a lot of fun working on that. It's an open standard, and it's used by a variety of companies, including Google, who's here today, and Yahoo, and Flickr uses it now, and Twitter has an OAuth API. So it's, it's very exciting. So that's, that's sort of what I've been working on. Um, and you can find the code on GitHub, or you can find it on Google Code. OK, next slide. I'll go through these quickly, because there's just other stuff that I'm working on, and it doesn't really have anything to do with Python. Really, except for that they're Python apps. Baconfile.com <laughs> is a is a Django web app, and what's kind of cool about it, and you and you might want to check it out. I have a gist on on GitHub that shows how you can use ba or Baconfile uses um, CouchDB, which is a non-relational database, and that's kind of a, a big heavy word. But how many of you guys have used um, like any sort of SQL service, like MySQL, SQL Server, or MySQL or Microsoft SQL Server, or Oracle, or Postgre, any of these that are, are relational databases. So CouchDB is a non-relational database. And there actually was a big conference today about non-relational databases. And it's very exciting. So uh, Baconfile uses CouchDB, so it's kind of fun. And I, I posted the gist of how it works with CouchDB. So if you want to check that out, I don't know, come talk to me. It's kind of fun. Anyways, we'll move on. It's boring. Boring stuff that I work on. These are all my free time. So six apart, I can't talk about most of the work I work on. And I feel bad because. I met someone at a party the other day, and he's like, why don't you ever talk about what you do at Six Apart? And I'm like, oh, because it's all secretive and cool and crazy. Um, but I do a lot of stuff in my free time. Leafy chat. So, so uh, this is a IRC chat application. It was done for the Django Dash. So Django every year has um, like a big competition where anybody can participate all over the world, and you get 48 hours to build an application. And this was one of the application that my team built, and it was a, a chat client for the web. So it's actually real time which is kind of cool. Like you actually see new messages coming in and you don't have to refresh the page. And it's not even done via polling. It's, it's 
uh, using a web technology that's called Comet, and it's pretty cool. It's there's a couple of Python libraries that enable you to do this sort of thing. Orbited and Twisted, which both Twisted has an IRC library, and Orbited is for doing the JavaScript part of it, and it's pretty cool. So, I don't know if you're really into uh, Python. Check those out. They're kind of fun. Next slide. Okay, so there's the end. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but anyway, sorry I didn't say too much about Python, but I was trying to trying to get a lot done in a short amount of time. 